So hi guys, today we will start with lecture three, which is lichenoid interface dermatitis in our series for dermatopathology. So with as with every lecture, we're going to start off with the clinical case, which is a 54 year old male presents with pruritic rash of the ankles and the wrist. So you can see this purple polygonal papules that are very, very classic for one of, of the reaction pattern that we're talking about. So if you have a biopsy, what are the features that you'll see here basically? So what we see here is, if you start again from the top, you see compact hyperkeratosis. Usually there's no parakeratosis. So you can see usually you do not do not see any nuclei within the stratum corneum. There is this wedge shaped hypergranulosis. So you can see the wedge shape of the hypergranulosis here. And then very, Classically, you see this dense lichenoid infiltrate at the dermal epidermal junction. So the, for the definition of a lichenoid reaction pattern, you need this infiltrate to be hugging the dermal epidermal junction. I've seen many residents confuse a superficial perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate that is dense with a lichenoid pattern. So in the superficial perivascular lichenoid infiltrate, which is dense, you are going to see some sort of a space between the dermal epidermal junction and the inflammation. Here this is hugging the dermal epidermal junction. So you see a dense lichenoid infiltrate hugging the dermal epidermal junction. And because this infiltrate is attacking the dermal epidermal junction, some of the keratinocytes will go into apoptosis and you see the scattered dyskeratotic cells. So you see the scattered dyskeratotic cells which are called Sivate bodies, colloid bodies, apoptotic cells. So all everything means the same. These are pycnot, these are cells which have this very pink cytoplasm and a pycnotic nucleus, small nucleus. And these are apoptotic keratinocytes. So you see those admix within the dense lichenoid infiltrate. And because some of these keratinocytes are dying, they will release the pigments. You're also going to see some pigment incontinence. Usually the lower part of the dermis is pretty clean and this is very classic for lichen planus. So both the clinical and the histological features are very good for lichen planus. So compact hyperkeratosis, no parakeratosis, wedge-shaped hypergranulosis, a dense lymphocytic infiltrate hugging the dermal epidermal junction, admixed apoptotic keratinocytes, pigment incontinence, and usually no eosinophil. So you are, you always have to scan this at very, so whenever you have something like this, you go high power and you scan the dermal epidermal junction very carefully and try to see if you see any eosinophil. Usually in lichen planus, you are not supposed to see any eosinophils. Sometimes it may happen, but most cases will never show eosinophils. Uh, because this is attacking the dermal epidermal junction, sometimes there is a space between the, so there's almost like a bulla formation, which is known as uh, St. Joseph space. But this is just because the dermal epidermal junction is being attacked and it is causing some dissolution of the basement membrane. It's not a feature that is always present, but you might sometimes see, in, see it in lichen planus. So if you see this, you can sign this out as lichenoid dermatitis compatible with lichen planus. And why do we say compatible with lichen planus? Because if this was a single lesion, it would be a benign lichenoid keratosis, which would have the exact same histology of lichen planus. So it depends on the clinical history of whether it's lichen planus or a lichen planus like keratosis or benign lichenoid keratosis. So lichen planus have some subtypes that you should be aware of. One is the atrophic type and the other very, the more important one is the hypertrophic type. So the atrophic type, as the name suggests, shows, does not show the hypergranulosis that we talked about, but shows the dense lichenoid infiltrate at the dermal epidermal junction, the apoptotic keratinocytes. There is a little bit of hypergranulosis, but then you can see that the epidermis is quite atrophic actually. So this is known as atrophic lichen planus. It has all the other features that you would expect to see in lichen planus. The more important subtype is the hypertrophic lichen planus. So this usually occurs on the lower legs of African-American uh, people. 
Uh, the importance here is this is many times misdiagnosed as a squamous cell carcinoma. So if you're looking at a lesion on the lower leg and you think that it might be some sort of a squamous cell carcinoma, at least for one second in your mind, you should always think maybe this is hypertrophic lichen planus. So if you think about it, then you can look at the history, whether there's a rash, whether it's a single lesion. And then you can also, what are the features that we see here again? So if we see the... Uh, a hyperkeratosis here. There might be some parakeratosis in this variant, but usually it's not very extensive that you would expect to see in a squamous cell carcinoma. So you have the hyperkeratosis, you have the hypergranulosis that you see here, and you have the dense lichenoid infiltrate at the dermal epidermal junction, and also you have the scattered dyskeratotic keratinocytes. So all these features are there. So here is a dyskeratotic keratinocyte. And there is no real atypia of the keratinocytes at the within the epidermis. So no real atypia. You might sometimes see some reactive atypia that might make it even more difficult. But it's not as extensive that you would see in a squamous cell carcinoma. So the important thing is to always consider hypertrophic lichen planus on lesion on the lower leg where you're thinking of a squamous cell carcinoma so that you do not miss it basically. Because if you don't think about it, you're going to miss it actually. So if you think about it, rule it out, and you move on basically. So that is a important differential diagnosis for a squamous cell carcinoma or a hypertrophic lichen planus. The other diagnosis that you need to consider in a lichenoid reaction pattern, one we already talked about is the lichenoid keratosis, benign lichenoid keratosis, lichen planus like keratosis, they all mean the same thing. The lichenoid drug eruption, lichen aureus, lichen striatus, lichen sclerosis, and ashy dermatosis. So as we already mentioned, lichen, lichenoid keratosis, which is a, is a solitary keratotic lesion. So this, the important part is the history here, that this is a single lesion. It is usually middle-aged females, and it is usually on the chest. So a benign solitary keratotic violaceous brown papule on the upper chest, but can occur anywhere. And sometimes it could be an inflammatory regressing stage of a solar lentigo or a reticulated seborrheic keratosis. Histologically, it looks almost like lichen planus. So if you didn't have a history, you might have to just say lichenoid dermatitis C comment and differential diagnosis includes lichen planus and lichen planus like keratosis. <clears throat> The benign lichenoid keratosis tends to sometimes show some parakeratosis that we see here. We can see some parakeratosis here. So that sometimes helps that this is not a rash of lichen planus, more likely a single lesion. But this is not always present. So you cannot just base it on the presence of parakeratosis. Other, the other features are all the same. So you have the hypergranulosis, you have the dense lichenoid infiltrate, you have the dyskeratotic cells. You have the pigment incontinence. Everything is here, basically. So <coughs> clinical, clinical pathological correlation is needed to differentiate between a lichen planus or a lichen planus-like keratosis. The lichenoid drug eruption <coughs> can be caused by multiple drugs that you see here. So you can see the rash here. So that is the reason that you need to look at this lichenoid infiltrate at high power. So every anytime you have a lichenoid infiltrate, you just go high power and you scan the slide from one end to the other. Basically. So you start scanning from here, you keep moving, you can see the dense lichenoid infiltrate, you see the dyskeratotic keratinocytes, but now also you see the admixed eosinophil. So if you find eosinophils within the infiltrate, then more likely the diagnosis is a lichenoid drug eruption. Basically. So you just scan the entire slide and you, wherever you see the scattered eosinophils, then you have to say lichenoid Dermatitis with admixed eosinophils, see comment, and these feet, the presence of eosinophils are suggestive of a lichenoid drug eruption. In lichen aureus, which is which presents with these red brown macules and plaques, often on the lower extremities, but also again can occur anywhere. Again, you will see a dense lichenoid infiltrate here. But this one, like clinically, you saw the red brown color actually, and the red brown color comes from the admixed red cell extravasation basically. So because you see a lot of red cells admixed within the lichenoid infiltrate. So this lichenoid infiltrate usually will encompass one, multiple reticulates, but once you move out, you can see that it is quite clean basically. It is not the 
entire dermal epidermal junction. It's composed of a lymphohistiocytic infiltrate, so the lymphocytes, histiocytes, and characteristically, you see a lot of red cell extravasation, which gives it that red brown color actually. So, this is a kind of uh, purpuric dermatosis that is called lichen aureus, where you see the admixed red cell extravasation with a lichenoid infiltrate and admixed macrophages. And there, because of the red cell extravasation, you are going to see admixed hemosiderin pigment also. So, you are going to see this hemosiderin pigment that is associated with this lesion. In lichen neditis, which are which usually present with this multiple skin colored asymptomatic papules that are very small, it is often seen in children and young adults. You can see all these small papules, very classic. And the histology is also very classic where you have this ball and claw pattern. So this is the ball of the infiltrate and these are the claws. So you, the, the retay ridges are hugging the ball of the inflammation and they, they are almost like claws that are trying to hold it off basically. So this is usually limited to one or maybe sometimes two retay ridges where within the retay ridges you see this lymphohistiocytic infiltrate. Uh, that is lichenoid actually. So a lymphohistiocytic infiltrate that is lichenoid that is spanning one or two retinal ridges and having this ball and claw pattern is very classic for lichen neditis. Uh, lichen sclerosis will present anywhere on the body but usually on the genitalia with this white polygonal atrophic plaques or patches that have this violaceous to erythematous rim. Histologically very classic again where you see this atrophic epidermis. So most of the time, the epi and that is the reason and this is also called lichen sclerosis at atrophicus. So you can see this atrophic epidermis on the top and then you see this sclerosis in the papillary dermis. So you see sclerosis in the superficial part of the epidermis. So very, this very hyalinized pink dermis that you see very close to the dermal epidermal junction. Usually there is a lichenoid infiltrate that is below the sclerosis. So you will see below the sclerosis, you, there might be this lichenoid infiltrate. It's not always present, so you do not do not need to have this to make the diagnosis, but usually when in an early lesion, this is much closer to the dermal epidermal junction. And as the lesion progresses, this gets pushed down and the sclerosis becomes much more prominent. Uh, sometimes it is difficult to make the diagnosis because the it's an early lesion and the sclerosis is not very obvious. So at that time you can do an EVG stain or a elastic marker to see loss of elastic fibers within the sclerosis. So usually there will be a loss of elastic fibers within the sclerosis. And that makes the diagnosis that will help you make the diagnosis of lichen sclerosis. This is an important lesion because some of these can proceed to squamous cell carcinoma around 5%. So it's a precursor lesion for a squamous cell carcinoma. And the last diagnosis, no, sorry, not the last, the lichen striatus is another one that you're going to see in this chapter where this present with this linear lesions that are on the, that follow the Blaschkort lines and they are skin colored scaly papules basically. And what do we see on the histology? This is not a very classic lichenoid reaction pattern because you don't see a lichenoid infiltrate, but more likely you see a superficial and a deep lymphocytic infiltrate. So within the epidermis, you're going to see some sort of mild spongiosis. You might also see some dyskeratosis. You might see a lichenoid infiltrate that is partly hugging the dermal epidermal junction, but mostly superficial perivascular and deep, but very classic feature that we always see in lichen striatus that helps you make the diagnosis is the periecrine lymphocytic infiltrate. So the infiltrate, when you go to the deep part of the dermis, you see this infiltrate to also be around the ecrine duct, ducts basically. So this periecrine uh, lymphocytic infiltrate is a helpful clue to make the diagnosis of lichen striatus. Again, clinical pathological correlation is very important because sometimes you will not make this diagnosis unless you have some clinical input that this is presenting in the form of a lichen striatus, so young kid, linear lesion, and then you have to think of lichen striatus. So mild spongiosis, some dyskeratosis, mild lichenoid infiltrate, and a superficial and deep dermal perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate, 
and then that also tends to be around the eucrine ducts in the base of the lesion. Those are the features that you want to see to make the diagnosis of lichen striatus. And I think this is really the last one. So erythema dyschromicum perstans, also known as um, ashy dermatosis. So they usually present with these gray macules often on the neck, trunk and arms, very common in South America and Asian patients. And histologically, this is also sometimes termed as a burnt out lichen planus. So a burnt out lichen planus is also people consider ashy dermatosis. So what are the features that we see here? So if you look at this, usually the epidermis is a little bit atrophic. Uh, you see some sort of a vacuolar changes at the dermal epidermal junction and a mild lymphocyte infiltrate there. Uh, and then in the dermis, you're going to see the superficial perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate and very classic, you can see all this pigment incontinence. So this pigment incontinence should help you make the diagnosis of ashy dermatosis or erythema dyschromicum perstans. So mild vacuolar interface change or sometimes a lichenoid change, but very mild, it is never very dense. And then in the dermis, you see the superficial perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate with pigment incontinence. Those are the features that you would see in ashy dermatosis. So that ends this chapter for lichenoid dermatitis. Again, for any additional in-depth information, if you want to see a lot of clinical images, uh, additional digital slides, just go to publications.patpresenter.net and then you can log in for free and look at this resource that has been built by 65 authors, Dermatopathology for Residents. Thank you. Have a nice day.